All right, so I'm about to do something I've never yet done on this channel, which is pulling back the curtains on my ad optimization process. In fact, I'll show you my real time thought process as I look through three unique ad accounts, one e-commerce brand, one lead gen business and one software company to show you how my process actually is very similar across all three and how do I make decisions to which ads to keep, which to skill and which to kill. Now, before we dive in, let me give you some context about why this matters. Over the last 12 months, we've profitably spent over $20 million on meta ads alone on the behalf of our clients. I've scaled e-commerce brands from seven to eight figures. We've scaled coaching and lead gen companies to multi eight figures. Same thing when it comes to SaaS, name it, name the industry we've scaled it, okay? And the truth is I've been preaching on YouTube that media buying has become way more simple than people think. And I think that a lot of people overthink the quote unquote art of media buying, okay? Now, I wanna talk about the U curve very quickly of what media buying looks like, okay? Now, you might have seen something like this, okay? This meme, okay? This meme right here, this is the U curve meme. So you might've seen something like that, okay? Which basically is like in, in this advertising space, this would be the equivalent of like, I'm just gonna copy some competitors ads right here and I'm just gonna let Facebook, you know, optimize my creatives. Here it's like, I need to have the best ABO campaign and then the scaling campaign and a retargeting campaign and like five ad sets in one and like the right amount of creatives and to scale every hour. And then you have like anybody who actually knows what they're doing will tell you just focus on creatives and simplify your media buying. OK, but that is not extremely actionable. Like, what do you actually do when you've launched your ads? What do you actually focus on? And that's more specific what I want to focus on today. OK, so let me take up this ad account first. And this video, by the way, shout out to our ad engine customers, okay, and students that we've been working with now have been asking a lot of questions about, you know, how do we optimize? How do we do it? So there's been like Alex right here, uh, which is running like a coaching company. And there's also Gonzalo right here, which was asking pretty much the same thing with his business right there. And so after showing them on one of our weekly calls, I decided, let me just show you on YouTube. Okay. So right here, I am going to start with this account, which this one is going to be a lead gen account from a coaching company. Okay. What I usually do is every day, you can look at on a last seven day basis. Okay. So every single day you open up the account and you look on the last seven day basis. Now you'll always want to find the hierarchy of metrics in the account. So this being a lead gen company, what I'll usually look for is something like this. I'll go CAC first. Then I'll look for, let me just try to put it right there. CAC and it's going to be cost per booked call. And then they're going to go cost per lead. Okay. So I'm going to prioritize to look into my campaigns by customer acquisition cost first, then by cost per book call, then by cost per lead. So if I'm on this account, let me just go back right here, right there. Okay. So last seven days, if I look into my cost per purchase, so I'm going to filter by this. So which campaign actually has the lower cost per purchase for whatever reason, the filtering is wrong, but it would technically be this one right here. I'm not really going to count this one because we haven't spent that much money on it right now. And we've in fact killed it very recently. Okay. So, $1,600 in cost per purchase. I'm like, okay, this is the healthiest campaign when it comes to CPA. I'm gonna open up at the ad set level. What I always do on my side is we have one ad set per creative concept, okay? So like one ad set here, if I open it up, I usually have my three creative variables. They're all like a hook variation of the same ad, okay? So just a small tweak in the ad. That way we lean into what is now working with Andromeda, which is they want creative differentiation and creative volume. So here we have a lot of different ad sets, each with like completely different creative concepts and each of which has three variations. So we have volume and differentiation by doing a structure like this one. So what I'm going to go here is I'm usually going to filter by amount spent. Okay. Because this gives you like statistical relevance. And then you're going to look into like what our CPA actually is on those ads. So, okay. Like this top one as an example, right? My media bar just killed it over the last few days. And that makes sense. Because if I look at it over a last seven day basis, our CAC was pretty high. For this client to be in a healthy spot, we need to have a CAC of about a thousand, a thousand five hundred dollars, honestly, for it to be like really delved in. So the second ad right here is now starting to get a little more spend allocated to it. And as you can see, four purchases for an $800 CAC makes a whole lot of sense. Now, why do I look into CAC first? The reason I look into it is because if I had looked into cost per appointment, as an example, I would have been like, oh man, I got to kill this ad right now, right? Because the cost per appointment is way higher on this ad than this one. But the truth is, 
those appointments might actually be way more qualified than these ones. OK, so therefore it makes sense for us to look into CAC first. So, OK, now, second thing I'm, I'm going to look into, and this is like a good example right here. So if I look into this one, OK, this one, first of all, is starting to spend a little more. It's, I think, still early. We launched it very recently. OK, usually what I'm going to do and I'm going to open this one up just to show you and see the history on this one. OK. Now, one of the reasons I started speaking about lead gen as the first ad account is because honestly, lead gen is a lot is less linear than e-commerce or SaaS is because there's like a lot more steps in the funnel and you got to use a little more of your good judgment because when you look into like CPA in this case, which is CAC, which is like our closed deals, they're very expensive. OK, so like it's not this is a high ticket coaching product. It's like five to ten thousand dollars. So. It takes a while before we start seeing events. Our ads, in fact, for this client, we're actually optimizing for appointments because we get more appointment volume than we are of purchases. OK, so in this case, that's why we don't optimize for it. So in this case right here, yes, I'm going to look into CAC first, but I will also take into consideration my cost per appointment. OK, so for an account like this one, usually what I like to do, especially in the lead gen space, is like when we're going to launch an ad, I'm going to wait a full seven days before touching the account. OK, like I'm going to wait a full week just to see like what happens, because then I know that our sales cycle is at least about a week long. So for someone to see the ad, become a lead, opt in, book a call, get set by a setter or book a call themselves and then get the sales call, maybe do a follow up, then close and send the payment. It takes a while. OK, it takes a while for this to even happen in the first place. So I need to wait a full seven days. OK. So we're usually going to try to wait for our ads to spend, honestly, like at least at the very least, like two times our average CPA, if not more. So our cost per appointment in this case, before we take action, like take a look at this ad. OK, these two ads right here that we killed, they were getting a decent cost per appointment. They were getting like a decent cost per lead. But if I look, say, over the last 30 days and I show you these two right here, CAC was getting like really high, like 3.3K on this one. And this one at the bottom, it spent like a full 1.8K and hasn't even gotten a single purchase in this case. So like, OK, our front end metrics like appointments look great, leads look great, but it wasn't getting any sales, which means the leads or the appointments weren't as qualified from those ads. So eventually we had to kill them, even though cost per and cost per appointment look well. So my rule of thumb for an account like this one is basically whenever we launch a new ad, we're going to give it a full seven days. We're going to have it spend at least twice its cost for appointment. And then the first thing I'm going to look at is like it's did it actually get me any appointments or not? So like take a look at this ad as an example that we just launched. There's a few more that we like launched not too, too long ago. This ad right here is an example like it's getting a OK cost per lead compared to the other ads, right? And it's not yet getting me any appointments, but it spent only one hundred sixty seven dollars and look into my other ads right here. It's not rare for me to get an appointment for $167. So would it be safe for me to come here and just kill this ad and say, well, it's not working? No, not yet, because like it hasn't really spent what I usually get for an appointment. So in other words, what I'm saying is like first seven days, look for this ad to spend at least twice your cost per like appointment or whatever you're optimizing for. We're optimizing for appointments. So we're going to go for twice our cost per appointment target. Look into whether or not cost per lead and cost per appointment or at least somewhat within the ballpark of the account. If they are, you can keep it running and then now wait for this ad to spend at least your usual CAC that you get on this account. And then once it's spent CAC, take a look at did it get a closed deal or not and kill it if it didn't. It's pretty much my optimization process for this campaign. OK, a little less like subjective than the other two accounts I'm about to show you, because now if I show you as an example, an e-commerce account. This one specifically has a slightly different structure, OK, because this one is a single Advantage Plus shopping campaign. It, I've said it many times on the channel, Advantage Plus shopping campaigns for e-commerce brands work amazing if and only if the product is like business to advertising is much more product aware than anything else. So here what we do is our structure. Instead of having three creative variations, we only do one. Of course, there's only one ad set in an A plus campaign. And when we open it up right here, we have our ads or individual ads within this campaign. So what I'm going to go here is I'm going to look over the last seven days. I'm going to go in amount spent and boom, show you this right here. Now, this client specifically, we usually use triple well when it comes to our optimization decisions. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go in triple well, go to attribution ads, go to TA plus V, go to the last seven days right here. Pick meta right here. Open up our 
campaign right there. And we're going to base ourselves off of what triple wall ROAS usually looks like. So triple wall ROAS in this case is uh, triple walls like own metric in terms of, of um, reporting back in results. So right here, what we can even do is filter by spend. Now, this account as an example needed some level of optimization right here, which I'm going to do live with you. So if I go to the last seven days, I filter by spend. Usually, honestly, if we can have like a 1.5 to 1.7 like account based ROAS, usually it's pretty good. OK, so what we're going to do here is, again, look into the spend and then turn off anything that is like below this like 1.5, 1.7. So like right here, this ad like 252 right here, we just killed it not long ago. But what I can see actually is that funnily enough, it got a sale yesterday, which boosted its ROAS, which is why it's actually, I think, doing better than what it seems. If I had shown you the seven day window prior, oops, let me go right here. The seven day window prior right there. So if I open up this campaign right here and all of its ads, and then we filter once again by amount spent. Yeah, we can actually see that the creative started to slow down a little bit at this space. So hence why it was turned off. Now, a question I often get is like, how often can you optimize? You can optimize daily. Just do it on a L7 perspective. Like every day, go here, pick last seven days, which means as I just showed you yesterday, I would have been 16 to the 22nd. Tomorrow, it would have been 18 to 23rd or 18 to 24th, I should say. So like so on and so forth. OK, so in this case, OK, this ad is turned off. This ad is turned off. Now, this one right here, it just launched not too, too long ago. It's been very recent ad. So honestly, I'm going to keep it live for a little longer just to see whether or not it recovers. This this ad though, right here, the right side up. What I'm going to do usually is like if last seven days performance is not great, I'm going to honestly like so take a look at this one. 0.9 ROAS. OK, what was the performance of this singular ad over the last 14 days? So I'm going to go a little longer in this cycle just to see has this ad been live for some longer time period. All right. Seems like this ad was launched very recently. From what I can tell right here, it started spending only as of the 21st of October, so three days ago. So it hasn't yet fully spent for a full week. So even though it's not yet performing really well, uh, you can see the first two days got quite a lot of ad spend, no sales. Day three, so yesterday, actually got some decent sales and ROAS was pretty good yesterday. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let it live for its first full seven days. So right here is an example. The ad is doing good. Right. I mean, I'm still in the last 14 days. Let me go last seven days again. So if I look last seven days right here, this ad 242 is doing pretty good. Now I see that this ad right here, 253 fall is actually not doing that that bad at all. It's actually doing really well and it was turned off. I'm going to open it up and see kind of why. There you go. You can see and this often happens. Sometimes you'll turn off an ad and then out of the blue, it just gets like crazy attribution from it. So then here, what I would do right there is just go back and turn this back on right here, which I'm actually going to notify my media bar of this right now so he can do this because I don't want to mess up his optimization workflow. But nonetheless, turn this back on right here because we've had like late attribution yesterday. It's very simple for an e-com brand, very straightforward for an e-com brand. It's like L7, is it profitable? Is it not? If it's not, then I look into last 14 days. So if last 14 days was, as an example, good, and this is the rule of thumb right here that I shared with our client, which what I would do, it's like I always look at last seven days every single day. OK, so basically, if you look at ads manager on Wednesday for L7, you look at Thursday to Tuesday. OK, and then what you do is from there, if the ad has been longer live. So you look last 14 days, if last 14 days is looking good overall, which therefore means that if L7 was bad and L14 is good, it means the seven day prior was good. I'm probably going to let it live for another seven days. And so then by then I'll be able to look at has it recovered or not. Sometimes, you know, especially if it was a winner before and mining a little more time and it'll recover. If it's a brand new ad and like last seven days is not looking good at all, then I'm just going to kill it. I'm not going to let it longer than a full seven days. OK, and if it's an ad that has been turned off, as an example, and last seven days looks good like this one right here happens a lot with late attribution, then we're just going to turn it back on in this case. So very simple, like three step rule for Ecom brand. And now you're going to see, I mean, I could have skipped this one, but honestly, I'm going to show it because I always get questions in the comments like, well, what about my business type for SaaS? It's the same thing. OK, like in this case, this is it's a SaaS company, but it's optimizing me like the purchase trigger is basically just somebody starting a free trial on the SaaS business. So like right here, it's the same thing. You look last seven days in this case, if we're at like like 170 euros, give or take, we're doing pretty OK. We want to get like the actual true objective of this account is to get closer to 100 euros. But like historically, it's been 170, 180 euros, give or take for an account like this one. So like, again, you go last seven days, you go here, open up the ad sets, 
This one is again, our typical account structure. So we have like one ad set with our three creative variables under it. So I go back right here, go L7, go by amount spent right here. Then we're going to look essentially, was this profitable or not? Yes, keep it. Okay, these two as an example, they spent quite a bit of money. They spent at least two times their CPA target. They're not really doing good, so we kill them. Now, this one is an example right here. Let's take a look. When was it launched? October 17th right here. It is not getting us anything, so I'm literally just going to kill this one right here live with you right here. Now, DCT42 is an example right here. Same thing. It was just launched. It's not getting anything so far, so I'm going to kill that one too right here. Perfect. And then now we're left with basically these two ads right here, which were just launched. So we're going to give them a little more time because I killed those two. I can almost guarantee you that ad spend is now going to get reallocated to these two. So anyways, you get the gist, right? And I could do the same thing now into the prospecting, say, US campaign right here. So I go look last seven days. All right. How's everything looking like right here? Well, this one is an example, 300 euro CPA, so not doing good at all. So this one, when was it launched? October 9th, so 15 days ago. So it's not looking well. What I'm going to then do is I'm going to look last 14 days just to see if it was doing good before it actually was. So you know what? I'm going to let this live a little longer in this case, since last 14 days was actually doing not too bad. So let this one live a little longer. Same thing here with ECT 36 live for some time. OK, last 14 days. Is it doing good? I mean, 200 euros CPA here last seven days, like 147. So I mean, not really doing OK last seven days. So I'm going to keep it live just a little longer. DCT 44 right here. Same thing. Launched about two weeks ago, last 14 days, barely getting any ad spend. Last seven days, barely getting any ad spend either. Since it's not spending much so far and it hasn't spent my CPA target yet, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to let this live here because it's barely spending. So I don't yet know and can consistently say like, yes, this has been a loser. That's it. It's literally how I optimize my ads. Last thing I do and I haven't done in this video yet, which applies to every single campaigns that I've showed you because they're all CBOs. What I would do right here is I would go, OK, do I scale or not my CBO budget last seven day is my CBO above or below my target? So here, if we claim as an example that 150 euros, give or take, is our target and you go right here, you would go, OK, yes, it is good last seven days. So what I can do is I can scale by 20 percent. So I'd go campaign budget. Go here. Take this amount. I'm going to go this. Then I'm going to go plus 20 percent. So 570, perfect. I come back here, put 570.78, publish. There you go. Scale this campaign by 20%, okay? So that being said, this is how I optimize ads nowadays. Fairly simple in terms of ad optimization process. Hence why I always say on the channel, media buying is not as complex as it used to. As long as you do it, this, you know, say for one account, if I do a daily checkups, maybe five to 10 minutes, if I do a checkup across all the accounts we have, then that's where it takes a few hours because we have, you know, dozens of accounts now at this point. And hence why I also prone a very simple account structure because the simpler the account structure, usually, I mean, the better we've seen the performance, first of all, but also the less time it takes for you to media buy and the more time you have to allocate to creatives, which becomes, again, the stronger leverage point if you want in the account. If you made it all the way through this video and you want to work one on one with me and my team to have us review your paid ads, offers, funnels, name it and help you implement AI into your ad processes, check out the link below and join my ad engine inner circle today. And with that said, if you'd rather us do it all for you, produce all your creatives, optimize your ads, help you out with your offer funnels, etc., then also check the description below and join our agency today. So with that being said, I'll invite you to check out other videos on the channel for some more useful marketing tips, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.